A hurricane is unpredictable and tragic. Its victims are left traumatized in the wake of its damage, struggling to cope with the loss it leaves behind. For Texas A&M running back Travion Williams, life had once felt the same way. At just six years old, his grandfather, the man who helped raise him, died suddenly, leaving Williams devastated. Unsure how to move forward, his aunt and uncle brought him into their home and helped him recover. Their love and support grounded him, and when offers to play football in college came rushing in, he chose to stay close to them and play at Texas A&M. You know, growing up, I was kind of becoming more comfortable with my aunt and uncle, you know. But uh, now, at this point, I call them mom and dad. But one year ago, as Hurricane Harvey ripped its way through Houston, that fear of loss came rushing back. His aunt and uncle's home, where he'd grown up, was centered in the area that would get hit the hardest. When I first started getting the notifications of, of it was a hurricane coming to the Houston area, you know, I started getting nervous, you know, I started calling my parents, you know, asking if they are aware of the situation. And yeah, they were aware, and they're telling me that, um, yeah, you know, everything will be okay. You know, we're gonna stay here. Everything will be fine. It won't be too bad. My older kids were telling me, Daddy, let's leave. Let's leave, we don't wanna stay in the house. And I'm like, well, it's not gonna be that bad. Let's just get some food, we'll anchor in and we'll stay. I think it was a Sunday morning, I can't remember the date. But we woke up and the water was coming through the walls. Once the water started to come in, we grabbed what we could and we left out the door. And we just kind of held hands and made it best that we could to get out of these deep waters that was over here in this area. I was trying to call them, I was trying to reach them, but it was times when their phones were dead and you know they couldn't get in contact with me and they couldn't uh, reach out to me. I was feeling devastated, man. And it was just, it, was, it hurt, you know, hurt real bad emotionally that I couldn't do anything to help them. As Travion worried over his family's fate, they waded two and a half miles through hip deep water to their daughter's apartment. A day later, 10 family members found themselves trapped on the third floor. The water had come up past the first floor of our apartment and it was still rising. So we called for help. They sent out, I guess it was the National Guard, the Coast Guard, or whatever it was. They came by helicopter to get us. The chopper couldn't have but six people. We had a newborn baby, you know, it was 10 of us. There was a lot going on. And I, there's no way that I could have left my family. So we decided to wait it out and wait for another rescue. We got a hold of another rescue team and they came by boat. I knew if somebody had fell in that water, that current would just take them away. It was really scary. It was really scary. The rescue boat took them to a gas station, but their nightmare was far from over. It was dark, the lights were out, the store was closed. The man was in the store, but he would not open it for us. There was a lot of us out there. The next thing you know, another boat shows up and says, hey, we got a dump truck that's down the street and that's taking people to a shelter. It was chaotic. It was chaotic. It was scary. It was hard. When I lost my grandfather, that was an extremely hard part of my life. And the thought of losing my aunt and uncle, I don't know how I would get through life without them. I was very, very worried about them. After two and a half days of searching for safe ground, the Davis family finally found refuge in a hotel and were able to connect with Travion. Actually, the first time I got reunited with them was on the FaceTime, and it was, it was a great deal, man, because, you know, just understanding the whole situation and now that they're perfectly fine, it was, it was a wild deal, man, but I'm glad that they got to where they need to be and everything is okay, and, and God really took care of me and my family. With his family finally safe, Williams could focus on football. He ran for over 200 yards in his first game after the storm and continued to build on that success throughout the season. This year as a junior, he's the centerpiece of the Aggies offense. When I go out there and play football, I play for them because they've done so much for me and I'm thankful that they're in my life and I wouldn't trade them for anything. Materialistic things can always be replaced with the lives of your family. You know, those are things that you can't replace at all. And my aunt and uncle, I love them so much and uh, you know, I'm just so thankful for them and I don't know where I would be in this life without them.